I was thinking that this might be a great opportunity for me to get back at my son for all the things that he has said about me up here. <clears throat> but I won't be cruel. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you again. I've been really looking forward to coming. And I hear that you've been exploring some of the Psalms. So I would like to offer a reflection on some verses at the beginning of Psalm 62. Different translations of this psalm offer various titles. One translation calls the psalm Waiting on God. Another talks about trusting. And yet another entitles the psalm Unshakable Faith. I notice the first two verses of the psalm are repeated again in the second part of the psalm. David, the psalmist, was going through difficult times and it seems to me that there is something here that is so very important for us to hear that he needs to repeat it yet again. So I will read the first two verses of the psalm from the Passion Translation. I stand silently to listen for the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for the Lord to rescue me. For God alone has become my saviour. He alone is my safe place. His wrap around presence always protects me for he is my champion defender. In these verses, the psalmist invites us to orientate our lives towards God. And in this instance, to do so, not by doing, but by being. Just being with God in the prayer of silence, waiting in faith and in love waiting as long as it takes to be rescued. There are many varied kinds of silence, but I feel I can't really go into them all here. I would like to talk to you about a particular kind of silence, a quality of silence that the mystics call God. This silence is less familiar and sometimes it is called intentional silence, but the generic description is meditation. This is a spiritual practice, and it is related to the tradition of Christian contemplation and has the potential to transform the Christian life. The journey into the silent land is deeply personal. It is uncharted territory and there are no crampons left by earlier climbers or explorers to help us find our way. There is no map in the realm of the spirit. You just become a trusting subject of its operation. So no one can do this journey for you. Your guide and companion is the Holy Spirit. It is a faith journey and requires us to trust. It is at the same time a journey that can be deeply communal. It is a journey of growth towards awareness and of ever deepening surrender as well as the discovery of our true selves in God. To be in this silence is a quality of the heart where one seeks to listen instead of speaking. We become silent enough to hear the deepest needs of our own hearts and also the prompting of the creative spirit in whatever direction he may take us. In this way of prayer, one is seeking to follow one's own inner road as it is opened. David, 
the Sama says, I stand silently for the one I love. So this speaks clearly of a relationship, a developing relationship with God, the one I love and the one who loves me. Father Thomas Keating, a Benedictine monk, called God the divine therapist, saying that God draws us inward to tend to us and begin the healing of the wounds of the human condition. For God is the God of the broken heart, the bruised spirit, the shattered body. Those are the shrines within us where the power of his presence seeks to dwell. Many things over the years have happened to our hearts. We all have experiences in life that have hurt our hearts. Our hearts where God dwells. Gabor Mate, a well-known physician and writer, says, it is not only the things that have happened to us that hurts our hearts. It is what happens inside us that hurts our hearts. What may happen is the shutdown of the self or a part of the self, a feeling of being numb or frozen, a feeling of no feeling, a loss of our own voice. In some situations we are unable to speak, we are rendered speechless. A disconnection from our bodies and often a sense of shame about ourselves. So what happens to our hearts is that there is often a loss of connection to ourselves and a worldview that makes it difficult to be in the present moment. We disconnect from ourselves and the present moment. And so we disconnect from the felt sense of God's love. How many times I have heard someone say, I know that to be true, whatever that is, but I don't feel it. Truth can be known in the head, but that same truth has never traveled from the head to the heart. There is no felt sense There is a disconnection. St. Augustine said, You were within me, Lord, but I was outside myself. There is an amazing story told by a scientist, a professor of mathematics called Edward Frankel. He speaks about mathematics as something being very special mathematics as a hidden reality. Listening to him speaking about maths is very inspiring, and I don't know a thing about maths. He was challenged while reading poetry to ask the question, who am I? How do I know I am alive? How do I know who I am? That is a great question. And this very clever scientist, a professor of mathematics, then says, I realized that I didn't know. I didn't know who I was. I didn't even know that there was a question to ask. The poem that challenged him to ask the question said, For life's not a paragraph, and death, I think, was no parenthesis. How do I know I am alive? Some people never ask that question. Do I know who I am? With great courage, Frankel says, I realized I did not know who I was. But now I think I know why I didn't know. Because something happened to me in my childhood. And this is what he says. When I was growing up, 
I experienced trauma, which made me bottle up my feelings and emotions, which made me trust my logic, my thinking, and run away under their cover. And to be afraid to go there and connect and reconnect with that pain and suffering which I experienced as a 16-year-old boy. He continues, I was growing up in the Soviet Union and I was failed in an exam at Moscow University because I was Jewish. I was deemed to be Jewish. My family was not religious, but my father was Jewish. So it was decided because of my last name that I was Jewish. I was singled out and ruthlessly failed on bogus pretenses. They wanted to convince many of us that we were not good enough. My exam lasted four and a half hours and they failed me. And of course, I remembered the story. It was my story. It happened to me. I knew all the facts, but I was not connected to myself at the moment when it happened to me. Recently, he says, I was able to connect and that changed everything. I felt myself again as a 16-year-old boy who was tortured and waterboarded by these people and I realized that what had happened in my heart was that a part of me died and was left there. My way forward, I was crawling on the road of life without even knowing, being afraid to know what really happened to me inside. When I connected to this 16-year-old boy, I felt, I felt that he was dead and cannot come back. This is what I felt. It was so, so sad. It was just such a sad, sad moment and so painful because my dream his dream was crushed by these people. There was nothing left. So what can I do? That is why I was so afraid to go there. That is why I was suppressing this memory. It was so, so painful to feel it. It was easier to pretend that I did connect to it. But you know what? He said, after finding the courage to remember and feel the feelings of my past story, I had this amazing feeling that he was alive. He was with me. He was here. I lost him for 30 years, but not anymore. He is here and speaking to you now. He goes on to say, this is not a game. It is about life and death. He asks the question, have you left your dead on the battlefield of life? Or can you find the strength and the courage to travel inwards and with the help of the Spirit of God, offer that part of you your love along with God's love and his touch to bring them back? This is a very real image of resurrection. As a scientist, Frankel says, it is so tempting for me to go out and find the proof. A scientific experiment, a perfect experiment that would prove the existence of the Holy One, the Holy Other, and the journey of the Spirit. It cannot be proved. You have to feel it. You have to feel it. I wonder this morning, is there anyone you have left behind on the battlefield of your life? A two-year-old maybe, a ten-year-old that was crushed and disappointed, 
a 16 or 17 year old girl or boy deeply traumatized by loss or grief a part of you waiting to be rescued healed and brought back to life so into the silence and the unknown depths of ourselves the Holy Spirit can lead us seeking to connect reconnect with those lost parts, as well as connect us to the divine lover. It was Augustine who said, we must fly to our beloved homeland, the place of the heart, for there the Father is, and there is everything. The rest that is entered is described as an encounter with the Comforter, an English name we describe as a paraclet. The Latin word paracleta means the one who answers the cry. This living silence is needed to be able to hear the cry of the soul. And the cry is needed for the Comforter to respond. So a sense of well-being and most of all the rich experience of God's presence as a comforter is felt. The Spirit begins to move within us where he wants to uncover and declutter the inner space and to bring back to life that which was dead. So this way of prayer is not really what is done by us, but rather what is done by the Holy Spirit in us as we sit in silence and wait. Healing God, come to my hidden corners. Open the doors to my soul, my soul rooms that are tightly locked. Awaken in me, bring to life all my deadness. Enthuse the depressed emotion and tenderly gather in your arms all that still needs healing. In this silence that the mystics call God, we often find ourselves held and gazing an intimate seeing in which all otherness is transcended, a deep communion that is wordless. As we sit in silence, seeking to be in the present moment, listening and feeling our bodies, we often become aware that we are in exile from the experience of his wrapped around presence. There is the story of a man going home from work on a beautiful summer evening. He pulls up in his car to sit and enjoy the sun going down. It was a perfect, idyllic evening. Just sitting there in stillness, he experienced a sense of awe at the beauty of the evening and the wonder and majesty and love of God. In his heart, he had an amazing sense of God's presence. He felt held, captivated by the wonder of it all. After some time, he realized he was now sitting in the dark. The sun was gone. It was time to go home. As he drove home, his heart was very full of all that he had experienced. He arrived home and found that someone had left a bike in the driveway. He felt irritated. He got out of his car, removed the bike, and was able to park. 
in the usual place. Then when he went in, went, then when he went to get in through the front door, he discovered his key was not in the usual place. He felt irritated. Eventually getting into his home, and all was in darkness, for it was late. Everyone was in bed. He went into his kitchen and found that it was very untidy, a lot of dirty dishes, and yes, he felt irritated. Then he remembered his moment in the sun, how he was thrilled, captivated, and held in beauty and the presence of God. What has happened to my heart, Lord? Why do I have to spend much of my waking moments trapped on the outer circumference of the inner richness of the life I am living? For I know within my heart the preciousness of that moment because sitting there in the setting sun, I tasted it for myself. I tasted it the wrapped around presence of my God. Yet standing here in my own kitchen, I am living like a stranger, exiled from the preciousness of my own life, exiled in this moment from the wrapped around presence of God. What has happened to my heart, God? Another story from another time of a poor man living in a shack in the woods. He was very poor, but very rich in his heart. One day the king rode by, and stopping by the shack said to the poor man sitting there, My man, what can I do for you? The poor man stepped forward and said, Sir, you can move along because you are blocking the sunlight. Blocking the sunlight. Blocking the sunlight of his love and wrapped around presence. Take a moment to consider the one thing in your life right now that blocks the sunshine of his felt presence, his wrapped around love for your heart. Divine Presence, as I go deeper to discover new parts of myself and more and more of you, wrap me in your love. Strengtheneth me as I may feel fear and insecure. Surprise me with hidden treasures of your Divine Presence that are waiting for me. Come as you are. That's how I want you. Don't run away. Come as you are. Say nothing. Ask nothing. Just let me look upon you. Just let me love you. Just let me look upon you with love. I invite you, just for a few minutes, to seek to be very still as together we enter into stillness and silence. I invite you to close your eyes and make yourself comfortable but upright in your chair with your back straight and your feet firmly on the floor. Let your whole attention focus now on your body. Start with being aware of the top of your head, your scalp, and see if you can feel it. This is also an exercise in awareness. Become aware of the temple area 
and the little muscles around the eyes. And see if you can let go of any tension that is held there. Be aware also of your jaw, neck and shoulders. And allow your tongue to fall onto the floor of your mouth. Then go to the chest area and notice whether there is a heaviness or a lightness. Can you feel your heart beating? Be aware of your spine and letting your attention dwell only for a few seconds, then travel further down your body to your hips and thighs, lower legs and wriggle your toes. Be aware of the chair holding you, a reminder that God holds you. And see if you can feel the clothes on your body. Let yourself feel. In this present moment, I let go of all plans, worries, anxieties, all intellectual debate, and I place them all in your hands. O oh Lord, I release my grip on them and allow you to take over. For this moment, I leave them with you. I now invite you to tune into your breathing. See if you can tune into your own rhythm of breathing. Breathing in and on the out breath, letting go. Breathing in and on the out breath, letting go. Now this time, on the in breath, say, I love you. Then on the out breath, say, and I love you. Again, on the in breath, Say, I love you. Then on the out breath, say, and I love you. Now repeat this for two or three minutes as we sit in silence. And also begin just to listen. What do you hear? Come as you are. That's how I want you. Don't run away. Come as you are. Say nothing. Ask nothing. Just let me look upon you. 
Just let me love you. Just let me look upon you with love. So gently, when you're ready, come out of your silence. Thank you for listening.